I've been diving on Kauai for maybe about 57 years and since I was seven years old. Instead of staying home with our parents, because we had eight kids and we had to go out and get food for the house. And from then to now, there's, to me, I think there's a lot of big changes in the ocean. You don't see too much of the the moise and the, the, the mullet that eats the green limo where the green limo used to go, where the fresh water road runoffs are, where the limo would be at least five to seven inches long. And we'd have certain species of limo that not here anymore. Large numbers of sea urchins would be dead all along the shallows and the, the deeper waters. You know, it's not as easy to get a fish as where it was back in the 70s. I've been hunting for 20 years. To me, things are more dry and burnt out than whenever I'm hunting. So I've been working for the County of Kauai for four and a half years, and it has become more and more obvious every day that climate change is, is an issue that's moving into the, into the front of our challenges. The, the primary source of emissions, I think, as most people know, is the burning of fossil fuels. In Hawaii, about 85% of our overall uh, carbon dioxide emissions are from three major areas. They are ground transportation, so vehicles, trucks, all those kind of things. The generation of electricity, so our, our utility cooperative and, and the fuels it has to use to keep the lights on for us. And the third is air travel. So there's a few other things that result in some emissions as well, that they include marine transportation, and then also our solid waste practices and, and the fact that we have methane as, as one big area um, coming out of our landfill in Kekaha. With electricity, a lot of people know that we've made tremendous progress. So if you look at the work that KUC has done over the last five to 10 years, you know, they've made huge strides in terms of moving to renewable energy. So that, you know, there's been a really big boom in, in solar photovoltaics, and you know, whether it's on rooftops or in large solar farms around the island. Really incredible progress. The thing that, that is challenging is that that's just, you know, one piece of the overall emissions puzzle. So when you talk about um, the need to reduce emissions, I think everybody who understands climate change in a general sense understands that we have to do that. We have to reduce our carbon dioxide emissions, but how much do we have to reduce them is an important question. And you know, does it matter for the island of Kauai? A lot of people will say, hey, we're so small that perhaps it's not an issue. When you think about that though, this is a global problem. And so really, we've got to think about how do we approach it in terms of really getting everyone to buy in. The challenge with climate change is that we all have to contribute to the solution. So these are urgent, urgent issues and we are stuck if we wait for others, if we, if we sit around and expect or blame others for not moving and, and allow that to be the reason we don't act. Well, climate change uh, for us in the fire service, uh, it, it has some major effects. You know, fire is actually a natural thing in the environment and it is actually very beneficial for our reforestation. However, with global warming, the way it has gotten, uh, our fires are 19% more through the years. Fires have gotten more intense and in the seasons they've gotten longer. Uh, when forest areas get very dry, which they do from the global warming, uh, then the fires burn with a lot more intensity. We have less trees to absorb the carbon, uh, and then that just perpetuates global warming. Fires burn more intense. Uh, th there's a lot of different costs to that. There's wildlife costs, 
because we lose wildlife refuge. Uh, there's financial costs, there's extreme impacts. Uh, over a billion dollars a year is spent on uh, fighting wildland fires in the, in the U United States today. Uh, and, and economically, that's a very huge impact. My life has been dedicated to preventing the extinction of plants here on the island of Kauai, and that's what we do at the National Tropical Botanical Garden. And for me, climate change is going to add a whole new range of pressures that will help drive these plants towards extinction. As rainfall changes and humidity changes and temperatures uh, change, these are factors that are going to stress the resilience of our ecosystems where these plants exist. Well, we're already seeing a lot more in extreme weather events. I mean, look at last summer. It was the hottest, humidest, most uncomfortable summer anybody alive on this island. We had more active hurricanes in the Central Pacific than have ever, ever been recorded. So we're seeing extreme things. This year, we've had virtually no rain other than two rain events from, from the beginning of the year till now. So the island is really dry. These are the fingerprints of climate change. We can see it coming. I just think climate change is just another factor. We have a lot of big issues that this island is facing. Climate change is kind of the big gorilla that um, if we don't pay attention to now, it'll, it'll sneak up on us. And we'll have consequences far beyond all these other challenges that we face today. My geological interest uh, in Hawaii is predominantly with the shoreline. I'm a sedimentologist. I'm very interested in, in the beaches. No two beaches are the same. There's a considerable difference from one side of the island to the other because of things such as the kind of wave systems they have and the source of sediment. There are a number of places around the island that have experienced problems with uh, changes in the environment and changes in the shoreline because as sea level rises, the natural tendency is for the beach to move inland. We need to understand the shoreline better. We need to actually start studying them in a, a systematic scientific manner so we can really understand how these systems work. That will give us information to allow us to move forward in terms of maintaining it. There are beaches here that we need to maintain because they are part of major visitor attractions. Our economy is based on our visitor industry. But I think Kauai has a chance to be ahead of the game and be a leader in showing how we can better interact with our shoreline by, by applying knowledge, by you know, learning from what's going on and creating a solution for that down the road. So from an emergency management perspective, uh, we have various concerns about uh, climate change and uh, potential impacts on the likelihood of increases in average ocean temperatures. What we saw last hurricane season was a very strong El Nino, which resulted in a record-setting Central Pacific uh, tr tropical cyclone season. More storms on record. That's quite a lot of concern for us uh, because more storms means a larger chance of uh, impact from hurricane or tropical storm or if not direct impact, indirect impacts such as increases in rainfall or associated storm surge, high surf. Secondary area among, ma among many would be the long-term effects of sea level rise. We got increases in sea level rise that can augmenting effects on tsunami inundation or inundation from storm surge or waves. Almost all islands in Hawaii experience 
damage to roads or highways, homes, uh, infrastructure due to high surf coming up and over the beaches and onto those roads or affecting those structures. So that's an area that you know, we're concerned about as well over the long term uh, from an emergency management perspective. What local residents can do is educate themselves about the topic of uh, climate change. Uh, look at possible ramifications and although the changes may take decades, if we look at what can happen in those decades ahead and the problems for the next generation, I think there has to be some way to have the or to create the political will now to make the changes. And the changes won't really occur only on the local level. It has to go to the state level, national level, and ultimately international level. If we're going to be controlling emissions or doing anything that could assist or to you know, help mitigate or prevent global warming. That's an area that you know, we're concerned about as well over the long term uh, from an emergency management perspective. have a one-year-old and a 17-year-old stepdaughter and as a mother I'm concerned about climate change on our islands and what I really want to see is us as a community be able to embrace change that we need to make the necessary changes to adapt smartly and mitigate climate change overall. One of my main concerns is that my son and my stepdaughter have the same life that I had here on Kauai. And you can see the dramatic changes over the course of my lifetime, but what are the changes going to look in their, like in their lifetime? And so some of the changes that I think need to happen really quickly that um, maybe it's almost too late are, you know, to make sure that our politicians and our community are supporting the right bills, the right investments to really make that change happen quickly. But I think it takes both sides. I think it takes our politicians as well as our, our leaders, as well as our community to come together and work towards making that happen because we can pass laws, as many laws as we want to. We can, we can make a lot of plans um, in order to mitigate climate change, but if we don't have that community support um, to make it move forward, we really can't get anywhere. Oftentimes here on Kauai, it's really hard. We, we don't like change. We want to just keep going in our, the way that we live. And I understand that because it's hard to change a lifestyle. But at the same time, we do need to embrace certain types of change in order to make a better future. And I think that that time is, has come now. If not now, then when? And I think we need to do it quickly and make the appropriate steps to get there. I was for many years a science writer and I've followed the, the, the story of climate change uh, since I started writing science stories back in the, in the 70s. You know, I think for Hawaii, one of the biggest, biggest issues regarding climate change uh, is, is the coastal issue. It's warming oceans impacting life on the reefs, it is uh, rising seas uh, impacting uh, our, our coastal infrastructure. Uh, one, of, one of my concerns is that we're not doing the planning we need to do uh, to account for the fact that uh, a lot of our coastal areas are going to be underwater. We have spent a lot of money and time and effort supporting our beach parks. Many of those beach properties are going to be underwater. We're not going to have beach parks. And, and unless we start looking to planning for uh, much higher oceans. We're not, we're not going to have those properties in the future, or they're going to be very, more, very much more expensive than they are now. The changes in, in the climate affect our coastal waterways, our estuaries become saltier as the oceans come up, uh, and uh, it changes the species diversity, a lot of our native species that are, that are uh, impacted by coastal ecosystems will be killed off or will be forced to move somewhere else. And we don't know, given the fact that we've developed our coastlines fairly dramatically, whether there will be places for them to go. Um, 
So those are, those are some of the issues that, that I worry about.